very stoked to ju dive into this and find out uh, what is coming. I've kept it fairly secret uh, from where I'm sitting. I think that there's a lot of really cool stuff coming. So let's dive into white and then we'll work our way through all the colors on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, I'm going to chop the videos up into colors for or to videos for each of the colors. So if you're looking for a different color, check the video description. I'll have links to the other uh, videos in there. But without further ado, let's just jump right in. We've got a lot to go over. A lot to go over. Um, let me make sure I've got my card preview up. There we go. There we go. All right. So number one in MTG Bro, which is the most hilarious shorthand for a set we've ever seen, um, is Aeronaut Cavalry. Uh, it is four and a white for a three, four human soldier. You're going to see soldiers a lot. This is a set about a giant war. There's a lot of soldiers, a lot of soldier effects. Be patient. You're going to see a lot of it. Um, Aeronaut Cavalry is flying. So it's a three, four human soldier with flying. Aeronaut Cavalry enters the battlefield. Put a one, one counter on another target soldier you control. So it's not bad. Five mana for a 3-4 flyer that gives something a plus one, plus one. Not terrible. Next up, we've got Airlift Chaplain. Cha Chaplain? Chaplain. Uh, two and a white for a 1-1 one, one human cleric. That's expensive. Uh, also with flying. When Airlift Chaplain enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a planes card or a creature card with mana value three or less from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't put a 1-1 counter on Airlift Chaplain. Okay, so a little bit of a dig effect. Something you're looking for. Um, as you can see in the art here by Caroline Gariba. It's really blurry there for some reason. Um, this cleric is reviving someone in the midst of a battle or in a medic tent. Can't really tell. Um... So that's kind of cool. You mill some cards into the graveyard and then Chaplain kind of raises dead and brings one back for us there. Next up, we've got Ambush Paratrooper. One and a white for a 1-2 human soldier with flash and flying. And then it has an activated ability for five mana. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one till end of turn. Two mana for a 1-2 flash flying. Actually not a terrible card. Uh, late game, you can give everything a little boost. I feel like there was a card in Dominar United that did a very similar thing. So, and the the art here is really dope. Just this guy looking like Judge Dredd with knives on his arms, like jumping out of a a thopter. Very cool. Next up, we've got Calamity's Wake. Some of these downloaded from Scryfall a little blurrier than others, but be patient with me. We're just going to go through them and try to do our best to read them. Calamity's Wake, one and a white for an instant. Exile all graveyards. Players can't cast non-creature spells this turn. Exile Calamity's Wake. The Silex's blast had raised the land, leaving behind only snow and sorrow. Urza stood alone in the sudden silence. So in the Brothers' War, in order to defeat his former brother, now Phyrexian monster, um, Urza had to use uh, the Silex, which basically destroyed everything around it, including potentially Mishra. We'll never know. So this exiles all graveyards, and then players can't cast non-creature spells. Next up, we've got Deadly Repost. One and a white for an instant. Deadly Repost deals three damage to target tapped creature. You gain two life. Interesting that they did three damage and two life. Normally they don't do uh, kind of uneven numbers like that, but I'm intrigued. Seems like a good uh, reprint. This is this is a reprint, I believe, from uh, previous sets. I think there was one in Crimson Vow last year. Next up, we've got Disenchant. One and a white, distort, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Instant speed as well, so that works out really great. 
Great Desert Prospector. Four and a white for a 3-2 human artificer. This guy's got a grabby arm. Uh, when Great Desert Prospector enters the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token for each other creature you control. So Power Stone tokens are mana tokens. They're mana rocks, uh, but they can only be used to cast artifact spells, triggered abilities, activated abilities, um, and artifact-related spells. So you can't cast like normal creatures, um, but you can pay things like tax. You can pay ward. You can pretty much do anything but cast um, non-artifact spells with it. Uh, that seems like an okay card. Five mana for a 3-2 that creates, like, if white is going to play go wide with a bunch of soldiers, then, you know, maybe you're paying five mana to create five um, power stone tokens, which next turn gives you five extra mana um, to wield. So that's pretty good. Next up, we have our first mythic in the trenches. One white, white for an enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. I don't, white does not need any more enchantments that are just trumpet blasts forever. Uh, for five and a white, exile target non land permanent you don't control until in the trenches leaves the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. Interesting. So you could play this. It's a, a delayed borrowed time. You're borrowing more time with borrowed time here. So you play. You pay one white white for an enchantment. All your creatures get a little bit stronger. And then later down the line, you can pay five and a white endless amounts of times. Um to exile your opponent's stuff. So take their biggest thing first, and then their second biggest thing second, and they have to deal with this enchantment before they lose their entire board, basically. Next up, we've got Kayla's Command. One white white for a sorcery. Choose two. Create a 2-2 colorless construct artifact creature, or... Put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature you control. It gains double strike until end of turn. Or search your library for a basic planes. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle. Or gain two life and scry two. That's really cool. Um, in the story, Kayla is Urza's wife. It's how he becomes the prince. Um, and she's very badass. Very powerful. So this is a really cool card. Sorcery speed, though, so that's good. Kind of, kind of keeps it tempered a little bit. Uh, next up, we've got Kayla's Reconstruction. X, white, white, white for a sorcery. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put up to X artifact and or creature cards with mana value three or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is pretty cool. Um, you know, I'm just thinking about the collected company in white. Yeah, basically. Uh, I'm thinking about the green-white uh, enchantment deck that's really hot right now. There's a lot of one or two mana creatures in there. So you can, if you pay three white and say six mana, so nine total, you're almost guaranteed to get like three or four creatures onto the battlefield, which all have different enter the battlefield effects. Uh, this is going to be a very cool card. Collected Company in white. Love it. Lay Down Arms. This is the new Swords to Plowshares. Uh, one white for a sorcery. Exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control. Its controller gains three life. So you're just removing something. As long as you have a ton of planes, you can remove anything you want. Any creature. Sorry. It has to be a creature. Uh, next up, we got our first legendary creature, Lauren of the Third Path. Two and a white for a 2-1 human artificer legendary creature. With Vigilance, when Lauren enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. And then you can tap Lauren. You and target opponent each draw a card. So the tap ability is a little favorable for um, commander play. You don't necessarily want in a um, 1v1 scenario to be drawing a card and letting your opponent draw a card with the same action. Um, but for three mana, you can destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's pretty powerful, just as is. Plus it has vigilance, so you can attack with it or block with it and then tap it in response to something. 
Uh, next up, we have Lauren. Oh, this is a Lauren further on down the line. No, that's this is Lauren earlier in history. Disciple of history. Three and a white for a 3-3 human artificer. When Lauren or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Urza and Mishra may have been Takasia's most famous students, but Lauren was the true heir to her legacy. Um, cool. And then we've got Lauren's Escape. One white for an instant target artifact or creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn scry one. That's that's powerful. This is going to be the limited um, bomb for, for white. Just like you had take up the shield in the last set um, or destroy evil. This is going to be get as many of these as you can. Give stuff hexproof. Hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. That that's pretty strong. Mass production for five and a white. It's a sorcery. Create four one one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens. Again, white is going to play really heavily into the soldiers' themes. So keep your eyes out for uh, stuff that helps that. Uh, meticulous excavation is one white for an enchantment. Uh, two and a white return target permanent you control to its owner's hand if it has unearth instead exile it then return that card to its owner's hand activate only during your turn so this um this is kind of skirting around the rules of unearth by exiling it first and then returning it to your hand otherwise you're just returning a permanent to its owner's hand um it's pretty good play this on turn one you're using it by turn three for sure uh the next one up is military discipline one white for an enchantment or a flash with flash that's pretty good enchant creature when military discipline enters the battlefield enchanted creature gains first strike until end of turn enchant creature gets plus one plus oh so flash something give it first strike Next up, we've got another mythic, Mirel, Myrel, Field of Argive. Three and a white for a 3-4 human soldier, legendary. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Whoa. That is bonkers. When Myrel attacks, create X-1-1 soldier token... Soldier artifact creature tokens where X is the number of soldiers you control. So you just double your soldiers every turn. And your opponent can't cast spells or activate abilities during your turn. This is... Um... Oh my god, now I can't even remember her name. Thalia. This is Thalia times a thousand. This is going to be the biggest, the biggest card in white for limited. Let me tell you right now, it might even be the biggest card in constructed for white. Uh, next up, we've got Phalanx Vanguard, one and a white for a two, two human soldier uh, with vigilance. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, uh, Phalanx Vanguard gets plus one plus oh until end of turn. So it becomes a three, two. Not bad. Power Stone Engineer. Oh, this one's really blurry. My bad. Uh, one and a white for a 2-1 human artificer. When Power Stone Engineer dies, create a tapped Power Stone token. And yeah, this is quick explanation of Power Stones. It's an artifact with tap to add colorless. This mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells. But it, again, it can be cast to use, or it can be tapped to use a lot of other abilities pay taxes pay ward costs the power stones are going to be powerful next up is prison sentence two and a white for an enchantment aura enchant creature when prison sentence enters the battlefield scry two enchanted creature can't block or attack and its activated abilities can't be activated so we've got uh, a lockdown or a pacify 
but you also get to scry too, which is nice. Recommission. One and a white for a sorcery. Return target artifact or creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If a creature enters the battlefield this way, it enters with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. So at sorcery speed, you bring something back, put a 1-1 one, one on it. That's a pretty good card. Um, I feel like most white decks are going to want to play at least one copy of this to get them out of a jam. If they're not playing stuff like black or stuff with reanimation um, coffers, then uh, recommission seems like a pretty good one. Next up, we've got Recruitment Officer. One white for a 2-1 human soldier with an activated ability that's three and a white. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card with mana value three or less from among them and put it onto, into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So four mana, look at the top four cards, reveal a creature card with mana value three or less. So again, it's like encouraging you to find those cheaper soldiers. They want you to create this wall of soldiers to uh, defend yourself and, and defeat your opponents. So this is helping with that, obviously. Next up, we've got a Repair and Recharge. Three white white for a sorcery. Return target artifact, enchantment, or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield and create a tapped power stone token. So we've got two we've got two cards that immediately return stuff to the battlefield. Repair and recharge is the expensive one, so you can get back your your expensive creatures, your um morels. Um and then the recommission is the cheaper one that gets back something 3 or less. Uh that's pretty crazy. Who knew white had so much graveyard play? Next up, we've got Siege Veteran, two and a white for a 2-2 human soldier creature. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Oh no, they've remade um, that cleric. Whenever non another non-token soldier you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. White is getting zombies. Uh, what was the name of that? Cleric from... Ikoria? It, it was played in every white life gain deck. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature at the beginning of each combat. It was very good. Soul Partition. So I saw this card. It's very interesting. One and a white for an instant. Exile target non-land permanent. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owners may play it. Luminarch Aspirant, that's it. That is it right there. Oh, I just remembered that I still have my chat up in a random spot. I can put my chat up in a better spot. Sort of better spot. I'll just put it up on, on me. Do it on me. Um, so... This is a exile target non-land permanent. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. A spell cost, a spell cast by an opponent this way costs two more to cast. So basically, you take something off the board. Um, say their biggest threat. You play this exile non-land permanent. Your opponent can then replay it, but it costs two more. So you're basically tempoing them out. It's very, it's a very interesting little trick uh, card here. The uh, flavor text says Teferi's body couldn't hand, couldn't travel through time far enough, but with Kaya's help, his spirit could. So Teferi teams up with Kaya to send his spirit through the realms of time so that he can witness the Brothers War and the calamity that ensued. Next up, we've got Static Net, three and a white for an enchantment. When Static Net enters the battlefield, exile target non online permanent, an opponent controls. Until Static Net leaves the battlefield, borrow time. Uh, lots of white enchantments do this. Seems like they're just making new ones for every set. Uh, when Static Net enters the battlefield, you gain two life and create a 
tapped power stone token. So this is going to, there's a three mana one um, from Kamigawa that this is probably going to replace because that one doesn't give you the power stone token. This one gives you life. Um, is a pretty good, pretty good card right there. Although I think they're leaning really hard into what white wants to do and has been doing notoriously for the last year or so. Um, so I'm very interested to see what the other, uh, other colors look like because they're obviously leaning into, uh, the color formatting here. Next up, we've got survivor of Corliss, one white for a one, one human soldier. Uh, with first strike, whenever uh, you can pay one, sorry, you could pay one and a white to exile survivor of Corliss from your graveyard to scry two. So it's a one one that lets you scry if you uh, want to after it dies. So it's useful early, it's useful late. Um, it has first strike, so playing this on turn one is a pretty good trade-off it is a soldier so it synergizes with all the other things that white is trying to do next up we've got thopter architect three and a white for a two three human artificer whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control target creature gains flying until end of turn so they're sending people up into the air pretty cool pretty cool Next up, we've got Takasia's Welcome. So this, these are the brothers, Mishra, Urza. This is Takasia, the person that they were sent off to go learn from. Um, the person that taught them how to become uh, artificers, uh, taught them, ba basically babysat them. They, they grew up because of Takasia. They grew up learning from them. Um, so Takasia's Welcome is two and a white for an enchantment. When one or more creatures with mana value three or less enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn, and it's an enchantment, so this is slotting right into the enchantment deck that's currently um, either at the top or near the top of the uh, current rankings on in standard. Um, let me just take a really fast look at the standard tier list right now. Uh, oh, it's actually dropped down to fourth because someone figured out a mono white aggro deck. So that has bumped Selesnya enchantments down a little bit, but still it has a uh, 15,000 plus matches played in the last two weeks. So very popular, has a 60% win rate. It's, it's pretty good. So this is going to slot right in because that deck has a lot of cheap creatures. You're going to get to draw a card almost every turn, most likely, and it counts as an enchantment, so it triggers all the things in that deck that care about this kind of thing. You can tell that I've played a lot against this deck because I'm not super stoked about it. I actually built one for my partner, and that's what I play against them when we're playing standard, and it's pretty good. It's a pretty good deck. Next up, we've got Union of the Third Path. Two and a white for an instant. Draw a card. Then you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. This is great get out of jail card. Um, if things are going south and your health total is a little bit lower than you're comfortable with, this is a pretty great little instant card. Gain some life. Hopefully you have some cards in your hand. If you have another draw spell... Do that before this one, obviously. But next up, we've got uh, Warlord's Elite. Two and a white for a 4-4 four, four human soldier creature. As an additional cost to cast this spell, tap two untapped artifacts, creatures, and or lands you control. So as an additional cost to cast, I've never seen them say tap an additional land or tap additional lands. Because lands tap for mana, so they would just put pay two. Um, but that's cool. I think you can use, obviously, creatures. You can use artifact creatures. You can use power stone tokens. Um, or or lands. You just pay two extra mana with your lands. 
I think that's neat. It's a 4-4 four, four for 3. You can get this out early on the curve. You just have to have other things to tap. Not too bad. Yoshin Medic. Look at this chair. God dang. Can you imagine being injured on like a battlefield and you see this thing like bumbling over to you? Like, I'm going to fix you. And it's like, no, that's terrifying. Um, Yeah. Two and a white for a one four. So good blocker. Human cleric soldier creature with lifelink. It says go save as many as you can. The city walls may be rubble, but Krug will live on in its people. Dang. So next up, we've got our first prototype, and these are really cool. This is a system where Urza and Urza and Mishra made a bunch of huge mechs. They're both. Um, artificers they both one of them went to the dark side and partnered with Phyrexians where Urza just went to the tyrannical side and they're both terrible there's no good or bad version or good or bad brother they're both hor horrible people um, but they build these giant mechs and they found a way to not only add flavor to these giant pieces but also allow them to not just be a huge set of, you know, five to six to seven to eight to nine mana mechs that are huge and do massive things because, you know, people start seem to veer away from really high cost bombs in limited. It feels great, but you're also going to avoid huge bombs um, at the end of your mana curve in limited because you never know if you're going to get there. Um, so they found a very flavorful way to make these giant mechs also viable early. And that is a new mechanic called Prototype. Um, you may cast this spell with different mana cost. It's colored and prototype mana cost. All of the prototype colors or all of the prototype mana costs are in certain colors. Um, and you get a different size. So it has... You may cast this spell with a different mana cost, color, and size. It keeps its abilities and types. So it doesn't matter if it's prototyped or not. It still has Vigilance, and it still has Pay 1, Tap It to put a 1-1 one, one counter on target assembly worker you control. So you either get this late game, you pay 5 to make a 4-5 assembly worker artifact creature with Vigilance, or you play it early game and you play pay two to make a two two assembly worker artifact creature with vigilance and this ability so it makes all of these kind of giant mechs um, viable in a lot of different decks because they have uses early and they have uses late and usually you only get one or the other uh, we have another prototype, Combat Thresher, 7 mana for a 3-3 construct with double strike. When Combat Thresher enters the battlefield, draw a card. So that's really expensive. But for 2 and a white, you can make a 1-1 prototype version of it um, and draw a card on turn 3 with double strike. So that's not too bad. It does 2 damage. Uh, next up, we have Platoon Dispenser. Five, five colorless for a 4-6 artifact creature construct. It's mythic. At the beginning of your end step, if you control two or more other creatures, draw a card. You can pay three and a white to create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token, and it has unearth of two white white. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of these colorless um, powerful cards that have colored activated abilities, so they're grouped up with that color even though this creature has uh, no color in its casting cost uh, next up we have scrap work cohort four mana for a three one artifact creature soldier when cohort enters the battlefield create a one one soldier token and it has unearth two and a white um, and if you don't know unearth is a, a returning mechanic that says you pay its unearth cost, return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step, or if it would leave the battlefield, unearth only as a sorcery. So before combat, you can unearth as much 
stuff as you can afford from your graveyard, attack with it all one more time, and then it goes away and it gets exiled from the game. Next up, we have Steel Seraph. Look at this Gundam ass thing. Dang. Uh, six colorless for a 5 4 artifact creature angel. We've got our first angel of the set. Uh, with flying. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gains your choice of flying, vigilance, or lifelink until end of turn. Hot damn. And you can prototype it for one white white for a 3-3 three, three flying angel artifact creature. That is cool. That is a cool angel right there. Um, uh, my brother needs four of those for sure. Uh, next up, we've got Tocasia's Onulet. It's like a pack mule, but it's mechanical. It looks kind of fleshy. And then it's got these big, like, hinges, gears on its joints. Interesting. Five colorless for a 4-4 four, four artifact creature construct. Uh, when Takasia's Onulet leaves the battlefield, gain two life. And it has unearth three and a white, so you get to gain that life twice if you want. Pretty cool. Next up, we've got Urza Silex. Um, three colorless mana for a legendary artifact. It is mythic rarity. Urza Silex is what he uses to fend off Mishra and his army of Phyrexian monster creature dragon engine things. Um... It's three mana for a legendary artifact. You pay two white white and tap it. Exile Urza Silex. Each player chooses six lands they control and they destroy all other permanents. Activate only as a sorcery. When Urza Silex is put into exile from the battlefield, you may pay two. If you do, search your library for a Planeswalker card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. That's pretty big. So Urza Silex is a board wipe and a land wipe because you only get to keep six lands. Uh, if you play this late game, you're like taking someone's board state from, I don't know, 12, 15 lands to six. All of a sudden, we're kind of restarting the game, if you will. And then when you do that, you can pay two mana um, and find Urza is a planeswalker in this set. So you probably have an Urza in your Urza Silex deck. So you go find Urza and you play the namesake. Pretty cool card. I'm excited to give it a try. There's uh, I like some of the port wipes in white. Um, but this one's definitely got the flavor and the mass destruction I'm looking for. I like it. Next up, we've got Veteran's Power Blade. Oh, another important thing, and we'll get to the lands in a little bit. Um, but another important thing to remember is that there's a lot of artifact lands, and there's a lot of important lands, especially in this set, um, and even in Beyond. Like, this is going to slot into a lot a, of modern or legacy decks, so this is going to destroy a lot of important lands. Next up, we have Veteran's Power Blade. Three mana for a artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus zero. Oh. It costs one white mana to equip a soldier, but it costs two colorless to equip anything else. So it's cheaper to equip it to a soldier. Obviously, that's what white's trying to make. So pretty good. I like that this veteran's power blade is like sticking into the like neck hole of a Mishra monster construct thing. They've just like killed this beast and then just stuck the sword in the top of it um, and left it there as a trophy for the next soldier. And then finally in white, we've got Yoshin Frontliner, who's a really cool, the Yoshins are really cool little um, clan. Uh, this is one colorless mana for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature soldier. Whenever Yoshin Frontliner attacks, another target creature you control gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. And it has unearth white. Uh, so you can do this twice if they manage to kill it the first time. That's pretty cool. 
Um, I feel like we can keep going. I'm going to take a, a 15 second break just to kind of reset, drink a bunch of water. So I'm not doing that on stream and then we'll jump uh, right into.